DM073 Gaming is brought to you by Happy Little Hug Factory. If you're looking for pre-orders of the upcoming sets, including Time Spinning Witch or the new Structure Deck, singles, or booster boxes of previous sets that have come out, you can check the link down below. Happy Little Hug Factory also has a buy list for Force of Wills, so you can get rid of those extra cards you have laying around and turn it into new upcoming product. Thanks so much, guys. Check them out and enjoy the video. Hey there guys, DMO73 here, bringing you a recap of this week's spoilers all in one video. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. We have a couple other cards that we have spoiled, the ruler sides of Shayla and Kirik also thrown in there. So we're gonna start with white. We have separation of fate. One drop chant with quick cast, says target J slash res, loses all abilities until end of turn, draw a card. This card is okay. I definitely think it's really cool that it can hit J res, so it's cool to be able to have that removal of abilities, um, especially if you're considering things like Ayu, like they go to give it swiftness, and then you use this card to be like, well, you now that you've lost your, gained your swiftness, I'm going to steal it from you, kind of do it like that. Um, you can also make it so that they steal flying, or any of those kinds of things. It's really cool. I think that it is a very interesting idea to give white this kind of removal of abilities, kind of shutting things down. I'm actually a really huge fan of it. Uh, and it cantrips, so, but it's pretty cool. Uh, keep in mind, though, that it doesn't say your opponent can't gain, uh, so they'll still be able to gain things back afterwards if you need, if it they play something else. Then we have Karmic Retribution, my personal favorite card of the White Spoilers, which is a choose one, destroy target resonator with no ability. That's not why I like it. Or destroy target non-magic stone entity you control, then draw a card. Um, so why do I like this card? Because it is essentially high speed dash for rulers with imperishable. Uh, this would be things like we're expecting burn descenders to kind of come back into the meta with Scarlet and Imul. With this, you can respond, kill your own J ruler, draw a card, flip your guy back over, they waste their burn descenders, and your person still has imperishable, so you can reuse the ruler again. Um, high speed dash was a card that used to exist back in the before the rotation of Alice Cluster to do this kind of same thing. So it's cool to see white, which is nine wolves colors get that support then we have treasure knight panda three drop five five that gains plus one plus one for each attribute among all gems you control so usually at minimum he's at least a uh, seven seven because you'll probably gain a different color other than light now at the beginning of games with tagris so 7-7 seven, seven can be potentially a 3, 8-8, uh, eight, eight, or a 9-9, nine, nine, or a 10-10 ten, ten for a 3 drop, and then spending 2 to choose an ability for each different attribute among gems you control. Swiftness, Precision, First Strike, Flying, and Pierce. That's a lot of effects. And with that new gem, um, One Drop Panda, that lets you kind of break into different uh, gem, like, will production using your gems, especially light gems, uh, I think this guy's actually pretty good. So, like, on turn three, you could drop him, have, you know, five different colors pretty easily, or four different colors, and a lot of light gems. You use the uh, panda that produces, by sacrificing gems, sacrifice your bonus white gems, play this guy, give him swiftness, first strike, and flying or swiftness precision first strike whatever and kind of use him to kill whatever you need to on the turn he enters potentially just turn three this is a really good card i think for pandas and you're gonna see it used a lot in my opinion especially ones that go for the kind of panda tribal aspect Lastly, we have White Sacred Beast, who's a little bit disappointing. He's just a 2-drop 6-6 six, six beast that says, when it enters the field, target resonator loses all abilities until end of turn. Um, I could see this being a counter card against a decks like Death and Taxes, right? Because you can just play it, shut off one of their resonators that's really hurting you, and then be able to swing in. Things like Faria, things like the uh, Guardian of Altaian Law, stuff like that. But overall, when we have the spell, the quick cast that can do this, I think I kind of like that better. Um, this guy also just doesn't draw you any card, he just enters. Hopefully you can kill that thing at the end of the turn. I'm um, just not a huge fan of it. Going into our red stuff, we got a lot of pigs today. We have Piggy, Hoel's great hero pig. 2 drop 5 7 who gives you some strength counters and then he can burn strength counters to give resonators specifically resonators swiftness and or flying so you can banish or remove two strength to give a resonator swiftness which can include itself 
Uh, so usually it's coming in as a two drop five seven with swiftness and then you can remove two strength counters from your J ruler to give a resonator flying and you can do either one as much as you want as long as you have those cards. Being able to have this investment for swiftness and flying into red I actually really like it for Kirik. Definitely feels balanced because there is a cost to it. He's not super high statted. Um, it, and it only gives stuff to Resonators. If it gave stuff to J-Rulers too, I'd be very disappointed at how crazy insane this could be. But I actually really like this card, and I think it's going to give Red a lot more viability in the next close, uh, next block. Uh, we have Pae Eli, Flaming Fist, another one of our Draft Rulers coming back. Uh, two drop, five, five, gets strength counters when it enters, removes the strength counter to give itself plus two, plus two, and you can play this ability up to two times per turn, so you can give her being a plus nine, plus nine for the two strength counters that she enters with, which I think is pretty cool for a two drop. Um, and then Awakening for three is uh, you can search your card deck for a card named Piggy, Hoel Great Hero, and put it into the field. So keep this in mind, so like five drop, right? 5-drop with Awakening, bring this in, Piggy comes in, both Pae and Piggy get their counters boosted, uh, Piggy can remove two counters to give Pae swiftness, Pae can pump herself up, plus four, so for the free counters, for just that five wheels, suddenly you have a 9-9 nine, nine swiftness and a 5-7 body to kind of back it up, uh, or you could just give them both swiftness and both flying and potentially just see a lot of damage coming their way. Uh, so I think this is cool for that kind of aggro aggression uh, versions of Kirik, and we'll definitely have to see kind of how it plays out. Then we have Piggy's Child, 1 drop 2 4. If you control Piggy, Hoel's Great Hero Pig, it can't be attacked, which I think is relevant. Uh, and then it can tap to give another Beast Resonator you control plus 2 plus 2. Um, again, pretty cool. I think it combos well with like Pig, uh, Piggy, so you can go like this guy on turn 1. Turn 2, you play Piggy, I'd give Piggy Swiftness, and then use Piggy's Child to pump it up plus 2 plus 2. So then you have suddenly a 7 9 Swiftness, uh, and then Piggy's Child can't be attacked as long as you have Piggy on the field, and so then they have to try to kill it and it, there's a lot of interesting things that I think are going to come out of red especially in that very aggressive nature that we just haven't really seen lately um, so I'm really looking forward to it then we have selection two drops as draw two cards then discard a card if you discarded a beast you get five strength counters I think this is pretty cool I think we're gonna see a lot more synergy of a potential beast deck and being able to save two drop hey I'm gonna draw some cards and gain strength counters uh, I think it's just a, a fine um, a fine common to throw into the potential options for a beast deck. Next up we have our blue stuff. There's a lot of interesting stuff here today. We have Treachery, uh, J Resonators you control gain plus 200 attack and precision, and then prevent all damage that would be dealt to J Resonators you control by J Resonators your opponent controls. So essentially this means that they all also get first strike in a way, but they just don't take any of the damage at all. Um, I think this is really cool. Um, especially for blue, it's a little over-costed, but essentially it says we both are kind of massing a board state, neither one of us is swinging, I'm gonna play Treachery, bump all my guys up, kill all your guys, and then say, here you go. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I think this is a card that's probably more of a sideboardy kind of card for blue, but as it only is one blue, I think that it's very possible that we could see this card come out in a lot of different things. Like um, in the Lumia Command Mirror, right? I could def definitely see this card being very viable, um, being able to use your board of creatures to wipe out their board of creatures and then say, well, I've got all my Lumias to back myself up because I won the Cancel War and got this to resolve. Good luck. Um, so I just think there's a lot of potential options for this card. Next up we have Rebellious Soul Ayu, so Ayu's not so friendly anymore, I guess. 2-drop 6-6 six, six, Were Rabbit Soul, that's important, because she's a new soul for the Ayu Ruler, uh, and she can be searched with the Ayu Ruler. With Flying, when she enters the field, you gain control of Target Resonator with total cost 1, as long as she is in the field, so as long as she sticks there, you get to kind of steal a Resonator. And then she gains, if your ruler is Ayu, specifically, um, you can tap her to make her a t copy of target J ruler your opponent controls. Now, so she gains all the abilities, all the stat lines, everything else of that J ruler, except she's not a J ruler, she stays a resonator. So resonator removal still hits her, um, addition resonators can still be put on her, anything like, you know, can bestow to her and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
So overall, really interesting idea for Ayu, being able to deal with some of those um, J rulers that maybe she has a problem with, because sometimes Lumia or Mikage can be a little bit of an issue. Um, now, keep in mind, if she has Imperishable and she dies, she'll just die. You know, if she gets flickered off the field for any reason, like that happens too, so just be careful with her. But all in all, I'm very excited about this card. I think it gives Ayu more options other than just the all-in push, all push for damage. Um, and the fact that you can search her with an IU flip, I think, is also pretty cool. Then we have Lunar Prophet. Uh, three drop, seven, seven. Look at the top card of your deck when it enters the field. Put it on the bottom of your deck if you want, and then draw a card. So it's just a little consistency boost um, for IU. Uh, IU does like to draw cards, uh, especially since she's playing that 40. So I think you'll probably see this card be played as one of those 40 cards for IU. Then we have Witch's Shadow, three drops, search your deck for a Were Rabbit with total cost three or less, or a Water Resonator with total cost two or less, and put them into your field, then shuffle your deck. Oh hey, this is a Were Rabbit with total cost three or less. Oh hey, this is a Were Rabbit with total cost three or less. Um, giving Ayu the ability to play um, cards from her deck in that way, not having to try to worry about drawing them, but just bring them out as she needs them. I definitely think it's a tool that, again, is going to broaden the options that IU has available to her, and I'm very excited to see this card be used in that list. Next up, we have our two uh, spoiled ruler sides, uh, Shayla and Kirik. Shayla has the Thunder Parasol, which is zero drop, choose one. You can play it once per turn on your turn. You either put an electricity counter on her or remove an electricity counter on her and then the weather becomes thunderstorm. So you put one on and it stays rain or you remove one and becomes thunderstorm. So you can kind of toggle when thunderstorm is gonna be happening until you can get those cards from the main deck that help you kit the consistency of thunderstorm on the board. I think this is excellent for Shayla. I think it excellently puts her towards a tempo deck. First couple turns, you're probably gonna wanna ra want rain over thunderstorm. So you can just build up some electricity counters and then use them as you need to to make those tempo swings happen. Very, very excited about this. And then we have Kirik, who has the blood of the dragon god, and he can remove two strength counters from his turn, from his self. Look at the top five cards of your deck, reveal a battle art, put it into your hand, and then put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. And you can do this once per turn, on your turn only. I'm not nearly as excited about this as I was for Shayla. I definitely think it is a necessary support for Kirik, especially with those battle chants. There's some pretty interesting ones out there, and Red doesn't have a ton of draw power, so making use of those a way to give him those battle chants and use his strength counters more, I think is actually pretty nice. Um, my only problem is right now, I think there's really only three battle chants that I really care about, um, which is Hellflame, um, because it can hit J rulers, uh, the Fire Dragon, and palm because it can is also a thunder and I can awaken it to kill a dragon or hit my opponent and a resonator and then play dead um, the problem is play dead is significantly less impressive in my mind if your opponent knows you have it uh, and because you have to reveal it I think that can kind of be iffy um, keep this in mind that you could whiff or you could also just send cards that you actually really wanted down to the bottom of your deck because it doesn't shuffle the deck afterwards. Um, so all in all, I still think this is good for Kirik, don't get me wrong. I'm just definitely thinking that Shayla is probably better, at least for right now, especially with all of the stuff that we've been seeing coming out for blue rather than red. Um, that's really going to make use of that Thunderstorm and its ability to be kind of a tempo deck. I will also say that I'm a huge fan of tempo, so that's probably also contributing to why I prefer Shayla. Going into our green spoilers for the week, we had Leaf Reflector, 4 drop 10 10 elemental. Whenever a chant, so this is specifically a spell, deals damage to this card, no resonator effects, no resonator attacks, nothing like that, no J ruler hits, no J ruler effects, just chants. We deal damage to it, it deals damage to your opponent. This is a very similar mechanic to Volga that we used to exist a long time ago. The thing is, Volga was any damage dealt to him, Leaf Reflector is just a chance. So all in all, I think this brings up some pretty silly strategies for Gil. You could play this with Steam Explosion, get like, you know, a Gil Alhamat into like a green Gil Alhamat and say, Steam Explosion, I'll deal 20 to Leaf Reflector and 20 to you. And then Leaf Reflector will deal 20 more damage to your opponent and you'll kill them. Um, pretty interesting stuff. Definitely gonna wait, wanna see what comes out of it. It's a little too cute, I think, um, but it's still kind of cool to see that style of deck come back. 
Next up we have Lorite's Wind, 2 drop chant spirit magic, quick cast. Cancel target chant spell targeting you or a J Resonator you control. I know what you're gonna say, oh it's a cancel spell. Personal opinion, this card is garbage unplayable. Um, yes, it's a spirit magic, so it can potentially be free, okay, but it doesn't cancel resonators being summoned, it doesn't win in the counter war at all, like it can't cancel a cancel spell, so it doesn't even win there at all. It doesn't affect any enter effects at all, and it doesn't affect any form of chant that doesn't target you, and there's a lot of them. Uh, I just think there's a lot of spells out there that do stuff to myself or do stuff to board wide or that kind of or don't even target that you're just gonna be like well I have Lorite's Wind and it doesn't do anything I just think this spell right now anyway is just a unplayable cancel spell um, which is kind of nice to see um, I just think there are way better things if you're gonna be playing cancels and there's just too many things that this card can't hit that it's gonna not want me to fill up space in my deck with it Next up we have Approaching the Truth. Now this card is one that I'm very excited about. One drop green, chant story quick cast. So Shahrazad is immediately putting this as one of her five stories. Um, look at the top two cards of your deck, put any number of them on top of your deck in any order, put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order, draw a card. So for Shahrazad, this just means I get to consistently look at the top card of my deck. However, keep that in mind if it is a chant story, you have to spend time to flip it back face down before you can use it again. I think this card is still very, very good, and it's going to be an auto-include in almost every Shahrazad uh, extra deck. Um, outside of her, I could see this card being played a couple of ways. Um, I still think you could just play Tama most of the time for like a Grill deck or something else like that, because it's not a spirit magic, um, because then you're also putting a body on board and you're drawing a card, um, rather than saying, oh, I'm gonna spend one will and try to look at the top two and kind of fix my draws or whatever. I could be wrong about that. I still think that kind of ability to scry and manipulate your hand is still good. Uh, I'm just not necessarily sure how good this card exists when it has to go into the main deck as opposed to just being a story that Shahrazad can use. Next up we have the Mighty Leaf Elder. All those Leaf Elemental uh, tribal fans are gonna be a huge fan of this card. Two drop five seven says all your other Leafs gain plus two plus two. I think this is really cool to be able to play that Leaf tribal deck. Um, thinking about it, this makes Leaf Knight come in as an eight eight to so potentially be a 12-12 with barrier just right off the bat. Um, leaf Golem becomes a 17-17. Um, leaf Fighter becomes a one drop six six. Leaf Wing becomes a one drop five five. Flyer. Um, I just think it's gonna definitely open up more options for Gil as we kind of explored in that feature match There's a lot of different directions he can go and Leaf Elder I think bumps up some of the lesser popular ones Next up we have our black slash red spoilers um, our scarlet spoilers. We have first up three drop 1010 mad Scarlasodon it's a dinosaur. Uh, when it enters the field, you discard a card, and if you have null, no cards in your hand, it gains precision. Um, that's pretty good stat line. Uh, three drop 10 10 with precision is pretty awesome. Um, and then of course it is a good payoff because you're having to discard a card in order to kind of bring it in. Now, Scarlet likes having her hand empty, but you're still kind of taking that risk by emptying your hand of a potential card to use later to be able to play this creature. Next up we have Null Darkness, uh, it is a one, run red, one black, quick cast chant, um, very huge fan of this card, it says, uh, quick cast, destroy target resonator, and if your hand is empty, destroy up to one target J ruler. So we have a J ruler hate card, a solid, um, cheap, quick, uh, quick cast J ruler hate card for any stat line J ruler. Now, I really like this. You have to have your hand empty for it to be J Ruler Hate, right? Which makes up for the fact that it's cheap and it can be canceled, so it can be risky, but I still think if players don't respect this when you're playing against a um, Scarlet deck and they flip too early or get too greedy and then you just kind of punish them with this, I think it's pretty awesome. Then we have Ancient Impact. It is an eight drop chant that cannot be canceled if your J Ruler is Dusk Girl or Crimson or Scarlet. And it just says, this card deals 2,000 damage to target player or j -res. So it's an uncancelable 2,000 damage spell. I th okay, let's finish the game out. You know, I'm, we're, we're top decking. I've probably dealt a couple points of damage to you. Now I'm kind of stalling out. I get to a bunch of will. And ta-da! Suddenly I have an uncancelable just here. Let's end the game. Um, 
I think that's pretty cool. It's definitely cool support to see for a deck that kind of likes to have top decks. So you probably just consider playing this as maybe a one or a two of in Scarlet decks, just in case the game goes long and you go, oops, you're dead. Um, so I think that's kind of cool. And then lastly, we have Scarlet Stone, which is the Null Magic Stone. Um, it says produce black or produce red, and this card deals 200 damage to you, or with null, you can tap and banish it to produce uh, red and black. So if you have no cards in your hand, it doubles up, um, which keep that in mind with ancient impact is kind of relevant because then you can cast it super quick. So like if you hit your four null magic stones in a row and you've got your opponent down to 4,000 or 2,000, then on your turn, you just go, well, I'm gonna sack all four of my stones, or I guess it won't really matter because you'd still have ancient impact in your hand. Never mind, ignore me. Um, I still think that is a pretty cool concept um, to have. Uh, it just kind of gets a little weird. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, I think Scarlet's getting some pretty interesting support. I'm interested to see what handless decks look like in this game. Um, but let me know what your guys' thoughts are or whether you're Team Kirik, or is it Team Kirik or Team Shayla. I personally am Team Shayla, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, let me know what your favorite spoilers are for this week, and then uh, deck profiles for the Panda List will be up tomorrow with Welser coming up on Saturday, and then back to uh, other content later this week and into next week with the next feature match. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and share this out with your friends who might need to get caught up on the spoilers from this week. And until next time, this is DMO73 signing off. Huge thanks to the patrons of the channel, you see their names here on the screen as well as down below in the description. They are what help make this channel run and help me do these awesome projects for you guys. If you feel like joining the channel and getting access to all the cool perks that come with being a patron, click on the P on the screen or the link down below. Thanks so much, see you next time.